wants to talk about Netflix. It should be fun. So why do we want to talk about Netflix? A couple of reasons. So number one, Netflix is by far the most popular application on the internet. About a third of traffic on a typical ISP network is Netflix. So maybe more or less on your network, but if you think about that, it's kind of crazy, right? One out of three bytes flowing through the network are Netflix. It's It's been Im immensely successful. And the second reason is because we, we have kind of a unique expertise in being able to talk about Netflix. Our previous product we worked on before Perseem for a couple of years was uh, cons completely related to managing Netflix traffic on networks. So we have uh, probably the most knowledge outside of Netflix on, on how this stuff works. And it's pretty interesting. So I've got a bit of a diagram here at a high level showing what happens when Netflix plays a video. And there's, there's kind of two parts to this. There's, there's what it does when it plays and what it does on the network. So when it plays a video, it says, okay, I need some video. I'm, I'm at second X of show Y. So I'm gonna look at my buffer and my, it's, a, it's an internal buffer where it stores the video and audio segments. It's going to take the next one out of there, decode it, and put it on the screen. And what fills that buffer is the interesting part and the part I want to focus on. So what happens on the network is when you press play in Netflix, you authenticate with their servers, and then your app goes out and says, give me the manifest file for this video. And the manifest file is basically a big list of different files encoded in different, at different bit rates and different resolutions that your device that you're watching on can play. And it has three links, three links, uh, HTTPS links for each file. And those come from three different locations on the internet. So three different CDN nodes it shows you. And your, those CDN nodes are selected based on things like BGP distance. And then your app will select those nodes based on things like throughput that it can get from them, um, latency, and BGP distance to those. And it'll, your app will select, uh, it'll establish several connections, so several, several TCP connections to different nodes, and then it'll get those file chunks using regular plain old HTTP over TLS. I've pasted an example of what one of these looks like. They're encrypted on the network, but basically it's a great big uh, obfuscated string requesting part of a file, and it does it chunk by chunk. So it's not a, it's not a big complete file download, it's chunk by chunk that it requests it. And basically what it's trying to do when it downloads files is keep the buffer, the internal buffers full. So it has a big buffer. We'll talk more about that in the next slide. But if there's room in the buffer, it'll download the next chunk. If there's not room in the buffer, it won't download the next chunk. So this is a picture of some of the internal diagnostics of Netflix. And I'm going to talk about how this relates to playback, but you can try this at home. In any web browser, if you press Control-Alt-Shift-D, it'll bring up this diagnostic screen, and you can see what's going on. So you can see, some of the things you can see here, it's using a large buffer, so about 125 megabytes of video is buffered in this example. That's about five minutes ahead of playback, so if something happens to the network, it's got plenty of buffer to keep playing through before it has to go fetch again. Uh, it's got the throughput at the bottom there, which is interesting. So this is Netflix's calculation of the network throughput based on the speed it's able to get when it downloads chunks from the network. And if it's unable to keep the buffer full, it'll switch to a lower bitrate video and it'll start a new buffer. And then sometime after that, the bitrate that it's actually playing will switch down to that lower rate and it'll be a slightly lower quality. And likewise, if the throughput is high enough that it can play a higher bit rate, so it's currently playing standard def and it can, it thinks it has enough throughput to play high def, then same kind of thing. It'll start a new buffer. It'll start getting chunks from that uh, high def file, and sometime later it'll switch up the video to that. And uh, the details of actually how it does this, the details of that algorithm, they're proprietary to Netflix, and and this is really the special secret sauce of Netflix's. Um, Netflix's algorithms because what Netflix is trying to do, they're trying to maximize the quality the user sees, so they're trying to keep that as, as close as they can to the available capacity of the network so that the user gets the, the most high def uh, experience they can have, and they're trying to minimize the number of upshifts and downshifts, so you don't, you don't want the video sort of shifting up and down and, and changing because that is, that is visible to the user when that happens, and as a 
as a primary constraint, they're really trying not to starve that buffer. So no matter what, do not let the buffer empty because that's when the dreaded buffering messages come up and that's when users get really frustrated. Is that, I got a quick question, is that why doing um, bursting and selling bursting is a, just a marketing ploy? It really degrades the Netflix or streaming content, does it not? Hey, that's a good question because I was actually just about to talk about that. Um, so, so one of the interesting results for Wisps with this is that a shaper configured with bursting can actually cause Netflix to misestimate the throughput when a video starts. So what's going to happen is you, if you've got a 5 meg plan and you're letting it burst to 6 megs for a little bit, then Netflix will detect, hey, I've got 6 megabits to work with it'll start downloading something that may be above that 5 meg actual plan speed, and then you'll end up having some extra shifting up and down that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Now, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's, it's not that noticeable, so it's going to go lower quality, higher quality, and then when the burst ends, back down to lower quality. So it's something that may be noticed. It, it's a bit of a waste, and uh, it's probably not going to cause it to actually stall, but yeah, yeah it's, it's not optimal. Okay, this is uh, this is sort of a geek slide here. This is this is showing Wireshark, but I wanted one thing that kind of shows these different TCP connections because it's important to understand that Netflix is not uh, not just it's not this is not a real time stream, right? This is this is the quote unquote not not a stream that we're trying to to get across. So when Netflix, if Netflix were a stream, when you think about if I was playing a five megabyte a five megabit video stream, I would expect kind of a flattish line around the five megabit level. And, that, and that's what you would see if you were looking at this Skype flow, right? You'd see some video. It's being encoded. If I, if I move around a lot, the bit rate's going to go up a lot. If I'm just a talking head, it's going to be a little bit lower. And it'll be stable around some, you know, depending on the capability of my camera. This is, if this is a 1080p camera, then maybe around five to 10 megabits. Not at all what Netflix looks like, because Netflix is not really streaming. It's downloading chunks of files and trying to keep a buffer full. So that's what you can see on this. You can see at the beginning of the video there, there's a, there's a high, high usage while it fills that buffer initially for a while. And you can see that the, I've got the different flows colored there. So you can see it's actually concurrently using three different flows to maximize that throughput as much as it can. And then uh, it goes idle for a little bit, and the video starts playing. And then after that, once the buffer starts to get some space in it, you see it's very, it's very spiky there. It'll, it'll go up and down as it tries to keep that buffer full, and it'll use those different TCP streams mostly at the same time. But it's, it's using all three of them. And this is just one example using one device on one network. So it's important to understand that behavior may vary with different devices, with different network conditions, and also over time, as Netflix does more research and changes their algorithms, because as I said before, this is something Netflix puts a lot of time and effort and research into. All right, next slide. Kind of a, kind of a similar thing. So this is an example experiment I did. You can try this yourself. And I started the Shaper at 3 megabits, started a Netflix show, and after a few minutes, I increased the Shaper rate to 5 megabits. And in this case, Netflix did not choose a higher encoding. It, it didn't make that upshift decision, so it kept playing at a bit rate under 3 megabits. And I was trying to see what would happen if it was filling the buffer with video well below the available capacity of the network. And so you can see how it still uses all the available link capacity when it's fetching chunks of video. It's just, it's just not consistent, right? You see the buffer fills at the beginning, and then it plays for a little while. It gets some room in the buffer goes up to 5 megabits where, while it fills it, goes down again, back up to 5 megabits, et cetera. So the point being that this is not, while it's filling that buffer for tens of seconds at a time, this is not leaving room for interactive traffic such as voice over IP, which kind of goes back to the problem Dan was explaining, where you may end up getting real-time traffic stalled behind those Netflix downloads. So that was... Uh, sort of a deep dive into how Netflix works. And we can draw a few conclusions from this that I've listed here. So first, Netflix uses multiple TCP connections and it uses TLS. Therefore, it's not possible to limit the number of devices or the number of concurrent streaming sessions, even with DPI-based policies. You just, you get a TCP connection, it's Netflix, 
but you can't tell which streaming session that TCP connection goes with. Secondly, Netflix videos are variable bit rate encoded. So kind of like I was saying about Skype, if, if there's a lot of action in a scene, it'll be a higher bit rate. If there's not so much action, it'll be lower bit rate. If you're watching a, an action film, it's going to be a high, uh, a high average bit rate for that. If you're watching a, you know, a comedy show where it's just someone standing there talking or a cartoon, it's going to be a lot lower bit rate. So a standard deaf video on Netflix actually varies from a few hundred kilobits to three and a half megabits. There's, there's that big of a range. So it's not really possible to limit resolution and just say, I'm limiting Netflix to standard deaf. There's no, there's no value you could pick that does that. And besides that, you, you don't know, as in the first point, when people are using more than one Netflix stream within their home. And then the last point, Netflix downloads in short bursts, as we've seen, at the full link rate. So that can negatively impact other traffic, um, VoIP, web page loading, gaming. You don't want those to be waiting behind a Netflix download. So a good strategy would be to use the capacity more intelligently using a, a modern queue management technique such as the CODL algorithm that Dan was talking about. So the more cap capacity network Netflix can use, the better the picture quality for the user. So you want to you wanna have the network that provides a great Netflix experience. You want to let Netflix use the capacity they, that it can, right? And the more capacity Netflix can use, the better it is for users. Um, so you don't want to artificially limit that, but you want to make sure other applications won't be degraded by Netflix playback.